at this time, I would like to introduce uh, Representative Aaron Pena. Thank you, Eva Jean, uh, senators, uh, members of the chamber. It's uh, good to be home, as, as was said before. Uh, I have um, a question that I'd like to ask everybody here. We have uh, a structural deficit. Uh, we are short of funds. How many people, raise your hands, will agree if we raise your taxes? Okay. Maybe a tenth of the audience. I will tell you that that was the issue that confronted us when we, when we uh, entered the session. And quite frankly, it's the issue that confronts us as we enter the next session. Because uh, as Senator Hinojosa said, we have a structural deficit. When we initially set the margins tax, we expected more money to be raised. Uh, the economy took a dip. Everybody's suffering. Texas is suffering. So a choice was made, and the choice is the choice I just gave you. We have two choices because in Texas, we have a constitutional amendment that says you have to have a balanced budget. That's a great thing. It really is. It makes us different than most other states. It makes us certainly different than the federal government. Amen. I agree. <laughs> And the federal government, if they have a problem, they just, uh, hey, could you print some more money, please? Or they call up their Chinese friends and they say, hey, can you lend us some more money? Until where other countries own the United States. Not in Texas. In Texas, we live within our means. And so if the choice is made by the general public, as I believe it was, that you're not going to raise our taxes, look, from the business community's point of view, you're not going to raise our taxes. You just gave us this margins tax. We don't like it. I didn't like it. Many of you said you didn't like it. But we're going we're gonna to accept it. We're going to be good corporate citizens. But now you want to hit us with another tax? So the decision was made. If you can't raise revenue, what do you have to do? Well, you have, you have to cut. Now, quite honestly, I want to be honest. The polls have said, and I've paid very close attention to them, the citizens of Texas say, when it comes to education, we don't mind funding education. That is a, that is a sacred area. We care about the future. And I think uh, everyone in our delegation agrees with that. When it came to the cuts in education, when it came to the budget, I voted against them, even though my, many in my party voted for them. But I want you to understand the circumstances that we were in. The good news is your taxes were not raised. The bad news is, and the reality is, the cuts had to be made. Now, I'm not here to tell you about how bad those are, because they were bad. I'm, I'm here to agree with you that they were bad. They could have been worse, and we made them better. The real problem comes next session. And that's what I want to talk about. I think most of the bills are laid out wonderfully in the booklet you have, and the senators have talked about some of the legislation that matters. But next session is going to be a doozy probably worse, in my opinion, than this one. Unless oil revenues change things, we are going to be, as Senator Nahuas has said, in a very deep hole. And so we're going to be, again, confronted with a question as Texas continues to grow. And as Texas continues to grow, its demographics are changing. And that has an effect on the per capita income of its citizens. The demographer says, the state demographer has projected and told us every cycle, Texas is going to get poorer as every year advances. Unless we educate the coming generations, many of them Hispanic and African American, unless we educate that, that upcoming group, and he actually calculated, I think $7,000 plus, poorer as a state. And so when it came to cuts in education, I I objected because there are solutions that could have been confronted. I believe we have those choices for the next session. 
because obviously this session is behind us. The cuts were made, we're going to have to live with them. Um, but I would encourage the city of McAllen and certainly the business community to get involved because, and especially to get involved early. Many of us have contacts with the state leadership or with people involved in government. You heard Senator Nohosa say that it was a, a best friend of the governor that may have had some influence. Each of us has friends that have influence with people in Austin. Next session, very early on, the question is gonna be asked, should we raise taxes or should we cut more? I'm gonna give you a very honest assessment. We have cut down to the bone. The federal government is very fat and overbloated. But when it comes to Texas, those of you who have to deal with Texas will know that we are, we are cut to the bone. We run a very efficient government. But we're gonna be confronted with the question, now what choices do we have? Many of you will probably, if I asked you again, do you wanna raise taxes, you probably will say no, hell no. Keep cutting. But we represent, am I doing okay? We represent that growing population that has to be educated. So again, I think an exception has to be made. As most Texans have said, when it comes to education, we have to educate our population. Uh, when it comes to cutting more, uh, if you check with some of the agencies, they will tell you they are cut down to the bone. Uh, and so I've already had discussions with Speaker Strauss. Uh, we are going to uh, begin to look at addressing the problem perhaps in a different way the next session because I don't think we can continue down the course we're on. Unless the economy changes, we're gonna have to do something. Now, does that mean your taxes are gonna go up? It doesn't necessarily mean your taxes are gonna go up. As was said, there are ways of expanding the base. And I'm not gonna get into that because that is for another day. The bottom line is we, as citizens of this community, have to be involved. The days of, uh, well, I'm not gonna talk to those guys because they're from the other party, those are gone. Democrats are now one third of the House of Representatives. We have to be involved, not necessarily as partisans, but as citizens who care about the community. Some of the greatest changes that occurred in legislation happened because McAllen came up there. Because Joe Garcia, Joe Garcia, are you in here? I'll give a plug to Joe. Joe is McAllen's lobbyist up there and he, he would step in and make sure that meetings happened with the governor or lieutenant governor or whomever. And we brought in friends. We brought in people who knew uh, the governor, people who were friends with so-and-so, and we have those contacts in this community, and they were very effective. The future is going to be different. Our, our current governor, I believe, is running for president or vice president. I believe in a short time <clears throat> when he leaves, somebody in the Senate who will be lieutenant governor will eventually be our governor. Senator Hinojosa and Lucio could probably identify the people who are, who are there, but we have to begin to build relationships with whoever that's gonna be. After that, in my opinion, it'll be Attorney General Abbott who becomes our governor. We have to begin to, to build relationships because quite frankly, when it comes down to issues, if they don't know you, they will fall back on a partisan perspective. But if they know you, it's about what's good for you. Um, this session, from my perspective, wasn't as good as it could have been. But all in all, I think we accomplished what you set us out to do. Don't raise taxes. Balance the budget. We did that. But we can't keep doing it over and over again. And so that is my uh, message to the chamber. It's not a bad message. I don't wanna leave you all with feelings of, oh my God, we're we're sunk, they're gonna kill us next time. No, they're not gonna kill us. Because we have the ability, we have the resources to make them listen, to affect the change in the future. Senator, I'm sorry, Attorney General Abbott was here the other day and uh, um, I wanna thank Dr. Fred Varias who brought uh, the Attorney General down. Doctor, are you in the audience? Thank you very much for that. That is a sort of resource that we need to lean on. We need to start early and say, Attorney General, this is your home. Uh, his wife is Hispanic. She's probably got relatives down here. 
we need to make sure that they know that they need to advocate for us. The future is great if we step up. And I believe uh, we truly do have a great delegation. And I do believe the future is, is bright. Uh, we simply have to do what we have to do and meet the challenges as our parents and grandparents did before us. God bless you, and God bless Texas.